welcome back in the EU deal after Brexit show. My name is Camille Magnisali and I have the pleasure of welcoming Maeva Magnifique to discuss the fate of Ireland post-Brexit. Hello. Hello. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Maeva, uh, what does the fate of Ireland post-Brexit give rise um, to many uh, discussions today? Well, we have to know that Ireland and the United Kingdom have a tormented past, if I may say so. Uh, indeed, uh, the island of Ireland was dominated by the United Kingdom uh, for many centuries, uh, which created a lot of conflict, and leading to um, the division of the island into two parts. Northern Ireland, which was under the influence of the United Kingdom, and the Republic of Ireland, uh, which is more uh, independent. Um, despite this change, um, many conflicts persist because the Republicans wanted the union of uh, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, and the Unionists who wanted uh, the island uh, to be uh, to the United Kingdom. Uh, one of the most famous conflicts is sadly the Bloody Sunday, uh, which took place on January 1972. Uh, and peace was confirmed by the signing of the peace agreement, the Good Friday Agreement, uh, on April uh, the 10th, 1998. So this shows that there is a complicated historical context uh, between the, the, the two countries, which can justify that the decision in June 2016 could have triggered new crises regarding the fate of, island, of the island. Yeah, but as you mentioned, a peace agreement was signed. So how could you explain the current tensions? The Good Friday Agreement was a milestone in relation between the two countries because um, the uh, political forces of, in Northern Ireland signed the agreement themselves, handed the uh, 13 bloody troubles uh, that left almost uh, 3,500 uh, dead. It's a lot. But, yes, but also um, because it was a sign of a future peace uh, between the two countries. Unfortunately, the agreement uh, didn't mark the end of the conflict because attacks uh, took place afterwards, uh, including the deadliest one in the history of trouble. So at the end, we see that there is not a real impact uh, through this agreement and that maybe the Brexit decision uh, will only make things worse. Of course, it's my opinion. And if I may say so, despite um, the provision uh, made by the United Kingdom uh, regarding the fate of this agreement. In fact, uh, last year, the European Parliament uh, approved the Woldra Agreement of the United Kingdom. So now that the transition period has ended, uh, precisely in December 2020, the, agre the agreement between Boris Johnson and uh, the uh, European uh, Union provides that Northern Ireland will continue to uh, apply uh, European regulation. So even though um, there, there have been discussion uh, between the European uh, Union and the United Kingdom, we can say that the exit of the United Kingdom from the European Union jeopardizes uh, the Good Friday Agreement. And could we come back on the Irish reactions when the Brexit decision has been pronounced? What, what were the, the consequences for them? So we can say through the announcement by uh, Ireland uh, of the decision of the Brexit that this de decision um, put at risk the smooth functioning of Ireland. Uh, indeed, given the heavy past that I just mentioned before, uh, the decision taken in 2016, despite the 55.9% of the Irish people who were against it, um, created an external border between uh, Northern Ireland and uh, the Republic of Ireland. So they, they, there is consequences because of that, uh, consequences in the population, but also uh, political, economic, and of course legal consequences because the law are now different so they can create conflicts. Um, even though through referendum in uh, 19, uh, uh, in 2016, sorry, uh, the party stated that they wanted to avoid um, a hard border between uh, the two countries. Uh, indeed, even if the Republic of Ireland is not directly uh, affected by the decision of the Brexit, they have to adapt their relation with their neighbours who still depend uh, on the United Kingdom. This change could in the future call uh, into question many agreements and uh, protocols, 
such as, for example, the one uh, concerning uh, the free movement of goods and services mm -hmm. between uh, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, um, but, also in, um, but also the one avoiding uh, the uh, hard border between the two countries. Uh, so the question on European law uh, that the Republic of Ireland has invoked concerning uh, the movement of goods uh, and services in particular is much questions in the face of the fear uh, of an economic exchange that can damage uh, the, due to the Brexit. So if I well understood, uh, the main Brexit impact for Ireland concerns its borders. Exactly. I mean, it's not... It's not the only uh, consequence. One of the main important. But it's, well, it's one of the main concerns in the fate of uh, the border and the consequences uh, in both uh, Northern Ireland yeah. and Ireland. Uh, however, it should be noted that um, the exit agreements um, with the EU in November 2018 and October 2019 um, were also signed with the aim of avoiding uh, an ex um, a hard border between uh, these two countries, especially because of this uh, historical sensitive nature of the border. However, another problem arises with regard to the movement of goods because the UK is um, a central hub for distribution to other European countries. This uh, can become complicated in terms of delays and administration, which is what the Republic of Ireland uh, will do. So the return, uh, the potential return of a physical border um, could therefore hinder trades because uh, worth, to, um, worth 39 million uh, euro per year between the two parts uh, of the island. But above all, it hinders uh, the movement of the 30 thousand uh, people who cross the island every day uh, in, both this, uh, in both directions. And does the state have an obligation to take necessary steps to face such tensions? Uh, I would say yes, because there is new protocols and agreements uh, that are being put in place. Uh, the most important in which is the protocol of Ireland and Northern Ireland. Um, indeed, when the Brexit was declared, um, both sides recognized the unique situation of uh, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. So therefore, uh, several interests were at, st at stake and uh, a solution that had to be found. Mm -hmm. So the solution was found um, uh, by uh, this, the form, with the form of a protocol, which is the protocol of uh, Ireland and Northern Ireland. So this protocol contains article um, relating to uh, free movement, relating to the movement of goods, of people, but also taxes and uh, European uh, regulation to which uh, the Republic of Ireland uh, can avail itself. So this shows that uh, despite a radical change, uh, this agreement keep the Republic of Ireland on its feet and that because uh, the EU still have an important influence on Northern Ireland. But my question is for how long? Because despite the law, the protocols, um, the articles, etc., Ireland's fate uh, is constantly in question as the post-Brexit system is built. I have another question. Um, does the EU-UK trade and cooperation agreements provide solutions or strengthen its uh, discurrence tensions? Um, now, with the transition period having ended in December 2020, the relation between uh, the uh, United Kingdom and the European Union is provisionally based on the treaty that I mentioned before, uh, including the Wilderoy Agreement or, for example, the EU and UK Trade Cooperation uh, Agreement. So this has uh, created a great deal of pressure uh, in Northern Ireland, particularly with respect to custom created great tension. So the entry into force of the new Brexit regime on January uh, the 1st of this year um, so the introduction of the custom control for uh, goods uh, crossing the Irish Sea between uh, the pro uh, British province and the Great Britain. So only a month, uh, month after uh, the transitional period, um, the effect of the Brexit have already been felt by Northern Ireland. Um, indeed, the fact that Northern Ireland is still part of the European common market and the custom territory of the United Kingdom means that in stores, for example, um, trade is slow by the administrative uh, standards. 
In addition, custom control have been introduced um, of the port of Belfast, for example, but also Larne and Warren Point, and supplies delays have been emptying from some stalls. And uh, there is several British brands that have uh, suspended their export from the island. Um, so the province is now currently um, enjoying a grace period of uh, some food products, um, such as meat, but stricter health rules mm -hmm. as well, uh, are due to come into effect in a few months, and the uh, supply problems could then arise. Um, Tension um, first arose uh, in February, forcing the government to suspend control uh, and out of concern and to protect the personnel, but also the cities that were around the, the tensions and the conflicts. So we can say that this uh, situation is particularly difficult for uh, the unionist community because they felt betrayed by their um, elected representative who mm -hmm. agreed on the protocol of, no uh, of Ireland and Northern Ireland, which establishes a border in the Irish Sea. Mm -hmm. So it fears that the current challenges uh, will push the agenda and those who want reunification of the island. And unfortunately, even today, um, there is still this tension. The time of this show is fading away. Um, Maeva, if you have to resume, in few words, or few sentences, if you want, <laughs> the fate of Ireland post-Brexit. Well, I will resume with facts by simply telling you that currently the port of uh, Dublin uh, has seen its trade with Britain decline by 50%, while direct routes between Ireland and Europe are increasing. Um, a port in the south of uh, of uh, the Republic of Ireland uh, is breaking all record with 476% uh, no, uh, increase in traffic to the EU. So as a result, uh, on January, uh, Europe attempted to introduce uh, a control on vaccine uh, sent to Northern Ireland, uh, which created another dispute. Uh, moreover, Article uh, 16 uh, of the Protocol of Ireland and Northern Ireland, um, which is a safeguard clause that allows uh, parts of the agreement to be overridden, the EU wanted to ensure that the province uh, did not become a gateway uh, to Britain. So I think that the decision made by the heads of states and the numbers uh, speaks for themselves. Thank you, Maeva, for bringing us your expertise on such topic. Thank you. Uh, it's the end of this episode. It was the EU deal after Brexit show. Thank you for following us.